Hello, and thank you for this opportunity uh, to make my pitch for the ISS National Sustainability Challenge uh, Beyond Plastics. This proposal is based on a technology um, that has previously existed and is currently under um, patent review for 100% uh, bio-based and non-isocyanate polyurethanes. Uh, my name is Jane Sternberg, and I'm a scientist and research professor at the Clemson Composite Center, which is housed at the Department of Automotive Engineering uh, at Clemson, but at the Greenville, South Carolina campus. So the motivation behind uh, this proposal uh, is to use the microgravity environment of space to really enhance and discover new properties associated with these non-isocyanate polyurethanes. Uh, Polyurethanes are uh, one of the least recycled materials, uh, and they are made completely from petroleum-based sources, um, as well as containing a very toxic component in the isocyanate. So we've developed this new approach of using uh, no isocyanates, uh, having a 100% bio-based carbon included in the polymer, and also making it recyclable. Uh, it's expected that the uh, microgravity environment of space uh, will help uh, help us understand and learn how to make these foams in a way that can compete with commercial polyurethanes and also hopefully discover some new properties as well. We have a, a time scale of about three months to get the samples ready and then a post-flight analysis of the samples once they return of about three to six months. So what we're addressing in this proposal is um, first off using 100% sustainable feedstocks or alternative feedstocks and then also uh, the, the concept of chemical recycling uh, to um, um, completely dissolve the foams and, and, and separate the precursors uh, enables us also to um, target uh, using less virgin polymer in the manufacturing. So the, the real commercial aspect of these foams has to do with the, the really the push from industry to find a non-isocyanate formulation. Polyurethane foams are used across many industries. We might all be sitting on one right now um, they're used in construction and insulation, automotive. And what we've really found is after, after this technology gained some uh, notoriety uh, by having won the 2021 Green Chemistry Challenge by the EPA, uh, we found that companies from across the board were interested in coming up with a non-isocyanate foam. And the fact that they are 100% bio-based and recyclable uh, really also adds to that story and also creates a much more sustainable alternative. So the way these samples would be made is uh, simply a mixing, a curing, and an expansion to create the foam uh, in space that becomes a little bit more difficult, but our uh, implementation partner, NanoRacks, has indicated that they are uh, they, they're confident that they can uh, complete the mixing and heating component. They said this will most likely occur in the material science glove box on the ISS to contain some of the gases that are released. Uh, CO2 uh, as the foaming agent and some solvent um, that is released. Um, there's some ambiguity whether or not they'll have to construct entirely new heating boxes uh, for this to occur, uh, but they're um, confident they can get to uh, the 150 C carrying temperature that is necessary. Uh, the risk assessment here, there's some concern about the diamines that we use in the curing process. Uh, however, the diamine we use is a bio-based diamine. It's a liquid diamine. And it has a much lower amine value than typical diamines, which are very reactive and very toxic. Uh, so this diamine, because of its weight and the low concentration uh, of the amine portion, has a, a LD50 value or toxicity value that essentially puts it in the non-toxic category. Uh, so we have had some um, talks with scaling up the synthesis and really producing this on our own, but most likely the commercialization pathway will come through licensing. And as we've been uh, developing the patent for this project, we've also worked with the Clemson University Research Foundation uh, as we talk to all these companies. Uh, and we've begun actually doing some research projects with them uh, so that hopefully it can be licensed in the future. So the two major outcomes here would be uh, foams that meet commercial properties. That's typically the major setback we have right now is we can't meet the, the ultra low density that are typically made with these petroleum based processes. And then also uh, maybe new properties uh, that enable this to be used in other types uh, of applications. Finally, uh, for the cost, you see here the, uh, the implementation partner has 
uh, put the majority of their costs in here with and without the hardware that might need to be um, produced. Uh, our project costs are relatively low since we're already actively involved in this project and can produce the samples and analyze them um, here at Clemson. Uh, and so you see the total funding uh, amounts here. So with that, I'll stop and thank you for uh, your consideration.